Here we have a Schaefer Guardian 4000. The 4000 refers to the maximum literage that you should really be holding with this. But the tank actually has a maximum capacity of uh, 4200 litres maximum. But 500 litres of that is the clean tank which is a legal requirement for all sprayers nowadays. Um, the booms cover 24 metres end to end and have try, well, um, try nozzle holders, which pretty much mean, uh, have we got one? Close to the floor, yeah. Uh, here we have three different types of nozzles, and you, you want a different kind of spray application, you just come around and spin them around, that's all you need. But I'll put that back, because you'd have to do all of them by hand, but apparently there are some which you can do automatically with little solenoids, I think. But here you have all your controls, so when you're, when you're using your induction hopper, uh, it's very simple what's inside here. You've got uh, your chemical, this is a jug for cleaning, and you've got your little spinner here, which is inducting the water in, and, and the water actually goes into the system there at the bottom. But So you spray new water in, then you get your chemical drum, and you pretty much just force it down onto this little mushroom, that sprays up into the canister and gets all your chemical out which works, which works quite well so you got your induction bin and then you choose where you're getting your water from so then you got your main tank your clean tank and then an additional bowser on the trailer um, so when you're in operation you need your pressurization it does not recommend cleaning with uh, pressurizing your clean tank then you got your main tank then what usually happens is you want your uh, tank rinse and that this is I'm pretty sure this is like your cleaning section but then here, here's your setting for the induction hopper which ain't gonna turn for me bugger but when you're using your induction hopper you need this setting on, on you need your setting for where you want the water to go so then we also got well, up in the cab it works very nicely upon an auto shut off system using the top con system. So the gist of it is, is this light bar at the top is going to show you your sort of accuracy in the middle of the row. And um, this is all wired into the controller in the middle there. And that controller is pretty much just going to, to um, talk to the different sections of the sprayer. And when you get a section you've already been over on this screen, it'll shut off your sections of the booms, so you're not doing double coverage, which is pretty much a waste of money. Also down there, you can't see it until I get out of the cab, we've got a way of controlling, because this is a rear, this rear axle is steerable, it's got a little locking mechanism up under there which has a tendency to break that's a manufacturing defect. So it all works very simply off this. I think it's a potentiometer type thing, but as you're going along, as you steer, it recognizes you steering. And, and when you're in the field, pretty much these rear wheels should match these rear wheels in their steering pattern. So you shouldn't run over any additional crop because it's a trailed machine, which is more likely to happen. What else do we have? Um, that is pretty much it on this, apart from the tyres, which make a lot of difference when you're selecting your different crops and that. So you need to be aware of your tyres. But on this is a two a 520 by 85R38, which is quite a nice tyre size for what we do here. Fail safe on your sprayer is you've got uh, a few sort of filter sections, you've got pressure sensors, stuff like that. So realistically your pipe shouldn't be blowing out from over pressurisation. Also if you're going through a field and you've got say a telegraph pole or something and you've got about, I think that's about two, just under two metres worth of, of extension on the boom there, uh, but that spring acts as your snapback. So, as you're going along, that bit will bend out the way, that will scuff up all the paint and that, uh, but you you won't bend or twist up your arm because that'll, that's designed to to spin at that point. And 
it'll snap back. Your driver will only notice through you hearing a large clang of it snapping back, really. He, but there's nothing to worry about with this bit. The sprayer is pretty much, much again, like a fail safe. Next up, we've got a Regaro block planter. The basic principle of this is, is you've got your little plants in your peat and you want to transfer them into a larger field in beds. So you'll go through your field, prepare the land, get a bed former, and you get, I think, a two metre, two metre beds. So then you come along with your planter. These have to creep along at about five or six K, I think. So then you get two people on the back here. It's a bit rubbish in the way at the minute, but, uh, and then you place your, you have, you have these in lines, and you'll cut them up into lines, and these, these blocks will slide down here, it, you, it's all computerised so it knows how much is on the rails and stuff like that. So it will come along, it gets down to here and then what happens is you've got these little arms at the bottom here which open and close like so, grab your little blocks of peat. So at the minute that is set to receive, so it grabs a block of peat like that it does a little twist operating off this little ram here which is all powered by air yeah twist back and then it should lift like that yeah and then leave it in the floor and it literally just keeps going all along like that on this six row system but this does it does mean it has to operate at 4k just to plant these little blocks uh what else can I tell you about it um, no, that is pretty much it. So you get your trays, you lay them on here for storage, and as these as these rows start getting lighter and lighter, you just keep filling in your lines, filling in your lines, and um, so it's all controlled in this box here. Don't know if it's open or not. Here's the little control centre of it all, using many little different computers. This, but it's a very simple system because there's that front roller there it has a potentiometer in it which knows how fast you're going so it knows exactly when to plant your little blocks so it's the most accurate way of transferring block peat into a bed row in a field the safety options on this are fairly simple well again this is all manual activation pretty much a big red button over the side there uh, you've got to be paying attention to this machine if something's gone down there you got to hit your red button and there is really not a lot to it but any like big debris and that that should have already been covered by the plow and this is going at 4k at most so your driver should notice anybody walking around should notice so there aren't a huge number of fail safes because it's such a slow moving vehicle obviously you've got a lot of moving parts here but pretty much the rule is don't go near it you don't need to go near it while it's operating and, but these don't even work that fast. It is pretty much just working like that constantly. We've got a Pearson's Enterprise. I think it's a 2000. And this is your sta a pretty standard potato harvester. And the gist of it is you've got your depth. These are depth wheels, similar to what you'd have on a plough. And everything is driven off the PTL of the tractor and runs through its own little pump which is controlled up in there by the box so then it, it's all, it all goes along and everything's controlled like this so then as you're setting in your row you lower this front section down which is all sort of your knives where you lift up to begin with if, and these wheels um, they have this little bracket here which as they set on the soil well, this is a sensor and this is a sensor uh, and pretty much whatever happens it'll if you in to if you're not deep enough you cover this sensor so then it goes deeper you go too deep it covers this sensor and it lifts up and so forever this little bit of metal is going to be swapping between these two and should eventually sort of rest in the middle and it should just be sort of on the little littlest tweaks that'll change and the same for the other side because obviously your row is going to be a bit tilted down again so you have your discs which will cut up the row and so you start counting your soil up 
we haven't got the web on at the minute, but the web we have on this is, where is it, I've written it down somewhere, a 32 millimeter, which measures between the cent one center of the bar to the other center of the bar, um, which is pretty much letting your tolerance of soil out. So you have a bigger distance between that, you'll let out bigger lumps of soil and probably some of your potatoes as well. So we've got a 32, whoops. So, when it comes up to this section here, it, which is where your stars are, I can't quite get an angle at it, but I'll, I'll have a go in a sec. Uh, but you have your stars on there, which will clean up, up all your little bits, because it's, it's rubberized, so it's pretty much just sort of fling it about. Right, so here's your little rubber stars. And pretty much the idea of them is sort of, they'll be spinning a little bit quick, and they just sort of keep carrying the potatoes backwards towards the next section. And the idea is that they're spinning at the right speed and they'll have the right angle on them. They'll pretty much just sort of fling and chip off the mud, which you don't want. So then that, the mud all slips through the fingers and goes back onto the floor. Then we have the Dolman roller, which you can just see there. And the idea is that will be spinning that different direction to it, so it's sort of like, I'm not sure what, what you can really call it, but pretty much your stars are spinning this way, then your dolmens will be spinning this way, while all the time heading towards the back of the machine. Right, you follow. Then we got another web, which takes it on up to the picking table. Okay. Here's the picking table. Pretty much you'll have a few people stood around and they'll pick out big clods, any beyond recognition potatoes and just sort of get rid of them. So then that goes to the end there, drops back under, comes back underneath, loops back on itself, off and then it comes back, it comes onto the elevator where it goes straight into the trailer. Now this has got, this will have the same webbing as that part down there because you, you'll be working on the same tolerance. So everywhere the potato goes on this machine, as soon as it exits the soil, it's being cleaned. So then and you go up, this all unfolds, you're going all the way up, and then you go into your trailer, and then you'll probably have another cleaning process back on the farm. But that's pretty much the gist of how this all cleans. Just like the sprayer, this also has a steering axle, but this isn't computerised. This is manually done up in your cab by the driver to try and get in sharper on your ends. Oh, if you didn't, because it's such a long machine, you'd have to have very large headlands. So this just minimises that headland area that you need. And pretty much just you'll have a little lever in the cab on the control box and you'll, you'll flick that yourself whenever you're steering in. The tyres on this are a bit strange because that, that far one is on the outside, this one's on the inside and smaller. I can't quite remember the reason why, but this is on 405s by 70 and 20s is, and the other side is is 420s by 85R. And I can't quite remember why you have different size tyres on it. Like I said earlier, everything's controlled electrically because the pump is, hydro is uh, PTO driven. So it's all done by this little box up here. You've got your emergency stop and stuff like that. And then you've got your steering axle. It's different speed rates up here. And just general, look, here's your elevator and everything. So it's all done by the driver. There's not a lot involved. There's different. The only reason there's a top gun in here is because we've left it in there. It's got nothing to do with the actual lifting machine, because it's all very much done by eye. So the driver will spend more time looking backwards than he will forward. Safety devices on this is similar to a shear bolt. It'll have fail-safe areas where it's designed to break if the machine is overworked, overstressed. So, say, while you're digging up your potatoes, you also get a massive boulder or something to stop that going through that smaller gap. Uh, what's more likely to happen is, well, more likely to happen is your driver will spot it or notice it when your machine grunts, because obviously your wheels are going to notice. Every, everything's going to notice, because this machine has got a small brain to it, yeah, and it, it should sense that something's not right. But uh, the webbing, that has a, a fail-safe breakage, 
edge where the small, smallest part of it will break, but pretty much that will then just flop down. And up there, you, you haven't really got a fail safe, if, but before you get into the smaller intricacies, is you, you do have your fail safes on your chains, so you do have your weak points there. So that just stops you messing up your hydraulics because obviously a chain's going to be cheaper than your hydraulics. And lastly, we have your Cavernland. This is what I'm fitted with a pas uh, Packomatic, which um, pretty much is a fixed furrow press. So it's all mounted to the same machine, which is very convenient if you're a long way away so you don't have to come back and pick it up. If you're used to one of those systems, like um, you used to have. But this is actually, the plough on its own is a SL95, which is to do with the size and specification. It's all to do with the model and that. But the plough bodies that it uses are 28, which is referring to its size and shape. By far a varier whip, and it varies from 12 inches to 20 inches, is or 30, 31 centimetres to 51 centimetres, if you want to be a bit more specific. But here's your varying rams. Then you've got your turnover and your headstock. It's all. This is. It's a pretty good system. And of course, before this bar was in, introduced for structure, because uh, the Packomatic weren't a perfect system. This used to not have this, but structurally it, it was a bit shocking, so they put this in. But this this Packomatic used to be varying in the width as well, so it had moved with the plough, but now it's fairly standardised. But um, so then you got your marbles. Which actually we'll start with we'll start with the your little toppers. So this this come along. Actually, better look at the bomb. It's, so you just set in. You got your skimmers, which are going to take off your sort of top layer of rubbish. So your stubble or your weeds or stuff like that. And then that's going to throw everything out over this way, and it's going to put it at the bottom of the furrow which you've already created. So then what happens is you get your big, your bigger furrow, uh, you got your little cutting edges here and then what happens is your saw comes along on, and f completely flips over like that as it sort of follows along it just sort of gets that curve on and of course in doing that you get a lot of sideways pressure to it so then you have to have your landslide here which is minimising and pretty much stopping the plough from being pushed away from your plough work because uh, it's all being sort of kicked, it's trying to kick over that way so uh, it, it all wants to go that way because it's just how the mouldboards are acting on the soil flipping it over like that but yeah, your landslides are stopping you from doing that so the main safety device on this plough is along this leg you've got your shear bolt and the shear bolt is usually the smaller one and and is designed to break under certain loads. So pretty much you're going through the ground and you hit a big rock. So to stop you from messing up all this air, this area uh, and potentially your leg, this bolt snaps in its place. So then all you have to do is probably spend a couple of quid on getting a new one. Uh, on these little legs, there's not a safety device mainly because it's only usually about oh, this much in the floor, this is literally just skimming off the top, oh, and so it's pretty much just sort of take that. That's just dealing with rubbish, it shouldn't really need a safety device for any big rocks because the the main stock is going proper deep in. And the other, I guess you could consider it as a safety device, but this is your depth wheel, and pretty much that's just stopping the back end of your plow going in too deep. You get in too deep, it, you'd start wearing up the leg and soon you pretty much just leave the, the your end furrow behind if, if that leg wore away enough. 